This cow doesn't look particularly lame, but I've got a sneaky suspicion there's a problem with both of these back feet. And when there's a problem with both, she's not favoring one or the other, so it's hard to tell. This is the Hoof GP, and this is how to make a cow more comfortable. So as I said in the intro, this cow is not particularly lame, although she is desperate to urinate on me. And with her business finished, let's explain. So this cow isn't particularly lame, but sometimes cows don't really show signs of lameness when they've got problems on both back feet. If you had a problem on one foot, you would limp on the other foot. You would keep one off the ground because that one was sore. Well, if this cow is sore on both back feet, she's not gonna keep one or the other up more than the other because both are sore, if that makes any sense. Now, I'll be totally honest, I'm not certain she is completely lame, but I do know that she's got issues that we can fix relatively quickly. And I've got a sneaky suspicion there are problems on both back feet. Clearly she's high on this part of her claw. There's some sort of deviation in the hoof horn here, but they're not completely overgrown, are they? If we come down from this angle, you can see this hoof is higher than this one. And that is the root of all evil. Right, let's fix it. The reason I decided to film this trim is because as a hoof trimmer, I know a cow with feet like this is extremely uncomfortable and highly likely to have a problem. Just imagine bearing all of your weight on one side of your foot for days on end. Clearly we've just started, but if we look from the side angle, you can see now that both feet are the same height. And if we left her right as we are and didn't do anything else, yes, we've not done a massive amount to help her, but she would be more comfortable because both claws would be bearing the same amount of weight rather than one being overloaded. At this point in the trim, it's looking like we've intervened at the perfect stage. So was there any real point in trimming this back left foot? This hoof looks well, but right now, I can't say the same of the back right. Right, if we put all the hoof horn that we've just removed back onto this hoof, you'll see that there was bruising there. Yes, it hasn't come to anything, and for me, that's good. It maybe doesn't make the best video in the world, and I am, that's good, because this cow is more comfortable than she was two minutes ago, and that's what I care about. Right, let's take it all back off as quickly as possible. You see there's still bruising in there from where it was overloaded from being too high. Now you might be looking at this thinking this is an issue, but it's not. This is just a small deviation where hoof horn is breaking away naturally. That is natural shedding. And if we take away any of this, then this would be overloaded. So we'd have to take this even further down. Right, next foot. This might not come to anything either, but look at all of this bruising in here. That is not pigmentation. That is bruising or sole hemorrhaging. So it's blood coming from inside the hoof, down seeping into the hoof horn because there's too much weight on this claw, just like there was on that one. You see how deep in this bruising goes? That is the early stages of a sole ulcer. So even if this doesn't materialize into a sole ulcer, we've done this cow an amazing solid and she should really probably owe us one for it because we stopped her ever becoming lame. This is the perfect time to intervene in lameness. She's uncomfortable and we're stopping her from becoming sore. You see that bleeding is going all the way in and eventually it would be an ulcer. I hate this. Once the knife gets out of its stride, it starts to bounce and it looks terrible. It doesn't make any difference to the cow, but I think it looks horrible.
looking at this footage slightly slowed down, it makes me think how cool it might be to get a proper slow-mo camera in action. Slicing through horn really fascinates me in ways that it probably shouldn't. Now this is a really important point. We've just trimmed this away and the bruising's kind of disappeared. It's still here, but it's kind of disappeared here. Now the important thing here is we don't need to cut away the bruising. That is not the problem. The problem is the thing causing the bruising. That hoof was too big, it was too high, it was too long, and there was too much weight on it. We removed all of that excess height, so it came down to being the same height as the other one, so it would stop bruising now, because the weight has been spread evenly between these two claws. So this bruising here doesn't matter. We don't need to get rid of it. Because we've got rid of the thing that was causing it. Bruised hoof horn maybe doesn't look fantastic, but it doesn't actually matter. It's just the causation, the thing that's causing it, that does matter. And we fix that. Again, we can leave this because if we took this away just to make it look pretty for you guys on YouTube and Facebook, then this would need to go even lower. And that wouldn't affect the cow any other way than negatively. This is what hoof trimmers do around the world every day. We work in partnership with farmers to make their cows as comfortable as we possibly can.